Hey folks, Technivorous here. I had a few issues with the last video I made on this topic, so today we're going to go over how to split models, and hopefully this video doesn't end up all choppy and laggy like the last one. Apparently there were some issues people were having with watching it. So, uh, the first thing we need to do is, I have a model here, and I'm going to show you twice how to cut something out of it. The first time we're going to use a standard support square here. So once you click on the model that you want to cut a chunk out of, you can click a support blocker, and you can get that in there. It does drop it to the build plate in this case, so it is running. Oh, it's just not dropping it to the build plate. It's just putting it on the outside. All right, so we'll have to move that separately. And we'll actually, we'll scale it up to 200. And, and we'll move it, we'll make sure it goes all the way through the model. All right, so this is basically just gonna punch a square hole in my model here. Uh, this is just an end bracket for some extrusion with a few screw holes and things like that. Let's go to the per model settings. You're going to want to select modify settings for overlap. And you're going to want to select cutting mesh. Now remember I'm doing all of this with the piece I want to cut out selected. Not the piece I want to cut away from. So uh, I haven't selected the bracket. I've selected the square hole we're going to be cutting. And I'm going to hit select settings. We're going to initiate wall thickness, top bottom thickness, infill density, and generate support. Okay, then we'll close that. We're going to make sure support is unchecked, and we're going to set the rest of these to zero. Okay, now when I slice this model, it'll take it a minute to slice, but give it a second. There we go, and preview mode you can see it has completely cut out that hole. So what if you want to do something a little more complicated? So let's see, let's take that out altogether. Let's go back and let's see what I got. What do I got here? Hmm. Okay, so instead of using the support square, you can also use uh, models that you've made yourself. This is a wheel I made for a rod just as kind of a spacer. So let's take this, drag it over here to the middle. This one is at the bottom of the build plate because it's not support, so it should be all the way through. But let's tug it down just a little bit just to be sure. Okay, now obviously when I print this, if I go all the way through, it's going to cut out these pieces as well and it'll print them, but they won't be attached to the bracket. So what I'm actually gonna do is raise this up so it's just an indent into the model there. And then we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and go to select the tool I wanna to use as my cutting tool. And then per model settings and cutting mesh. We're gonna again add wall thickness, top bottom thickness, infill density, and support. Now it's important to note on a flat object like this, I don't need to add the support and make sure it's unchecked because I'm not using support in my model. If, however, you're printing something tall or with weird angles, you're going to want to make sure that you import that and uncheck it in order to get your cut properly done. So let's slice this. We should have a nice indentation of that wheel here. Soon, eventually, maybe. There we go. Let's see what it looks like in our slice preview. You can see there it is and it did cut all the way through so let's go back take this wheel again here and move it up until it just barely goes in there oh see it's doing that uh, because it's my model it's automatically dropping it to the build plate so let's uncheck that and we'll try it again just try to get that outline in there uh, this is a good way to make parts fit together, however, I would incorporate some horizontal expansion as well in order to make that fart part, <laughs> excuse me, that part fit better in there. Uh, and there you can see we have the wheel cut out of our object. We could go all the way through. You can use this for several different things, and it works really, really well. And pretty much flawlessly. Some of the more complex geometries do take time. Uh, but that is just a calculation thing on the computer side. And I've yet to see this not work, so 
Um, let me know if you think that there's a better way to do this down in the comments down below. This is actually what these per model settings, what one of the things that they're for. You can do a lot more with these, and we'll get into that in other videos. If you have any Kira questions, don't forget to leave them down below. As I said, I'm hoping this video is not as choppy and laggy as the last one. I'll just have to double and triple check before I post it this time, and we'll watch it before we make it go public. So I hope that this was helpful to you. Uh, leave me a like if it was. Don't forget to drop your Kira questions in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer your questions. And I'll put a playlist at the top of the screen if you're curious. That is Kira settings in five minutes or less. And it'll go through each of the individual settings over here on the right in their own five minute video and kind of tell you what they do and how to use them and all of that. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Technivorous out.